Some animals are easy to love when they're warm and fuzzy, like old Cecil here, and sometimes maybe not so easy when they're sort of scaly and scary like the ones we just saw. But there's some animals that just absolutely will not let you love them. And it's odd because they have love in their name. Although they do not bite nor do they sting, there is no love loss between human beings and love bugs. They are pests of the first order, some years more pesky than others. But they're never one of those welcome signs of the changing of the seasons, like the dogwood bloom of spring or the leaves of autumn. Instead of filling one's heart with lightness at the signals of the coming refreshing in nature, the arrival of the love bug just clues us that we're in for about four weeks of having to deal with splattered windshields and crunchy, squishy, smelly walkways. Scientifically, the love bug is the Plesia nearctica, or something close to that. It's a species of march fly native to Central America, and now along the Gulf Coast of the United States. The love bug goes by several names, honeymoon fly, double-headed fly, double-headed because during and after mating, the mature male and female remain together for several days. The first scientific write-up about the love bug came in 1940, but they had already been seen in Louisiana as early as 1911. And by the end of the 20th century, they were spread from Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. We don't really notice the larvae. They stay on the ground and feed on decayed vegetation. In that stage, they're actually beneficial to a degree, I guess. But in the adult stage, when they take to wing and take to each other, not so much. My personal experience with love bugs, I seem to remember them many years ago when I took an autumn trip to South Texas. I'd never seen anything like them here at home before. Someone there advised that we pour coke over our windshield with wipers on and that'd get rid of them. Maybe it worked, can't remember. Current folk wisdom says you can wipe them off your car bumper with a bounce sheet. I have discovered a drive through the car wash works best. One or two of them wouldn't be a problem but more often they seem to come in batches of one or two million, probably because they don't seem to have any natural enemies. Birds don't seem to care for them. Now the most common enemy of love bugs seems to be automobile windshields. However, in recent years, the annual eruption of mating pairs doesn't seem to be as plentiful as a decade and a half ago, with some years being heavier than others. There's several folk remedies posted on social media to try to get rid of them at your house. I haven't found any that I've called effective yet. Spraying lemon dishwashing liquid mixed with mouthwash diluted in water on walls and windows didn't do all that much. Wiping it off the windows does leave a pleasing shine, however. No, maybe the best way to deal with them is just put up with them until the invasion is over. The adult pairs only live individually from two to four days, but they just keep on coming, wave after wave. I'll end with what a motorcyclist told me at the gas pump the other day when I asked him if the love bugs weren't about to drive him crazy. He said, yeah, but they sure do keep me full. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. Down Mississippi Roads.